what's going on so i had some people ask me um to do a short video on how i mix and master beats for my store so i'm going to explain that and i use neutron to uh mix the individual instruments and i use ozone to uh do the mastering process so the difference between mixing and mastering is the mixing is just the individual instruments it would be like the kick the hat you know things like that and the mastering is the song as a whole to make the song a little bit louder good leveling things like that I'll show you really quick my setup that i'm using is just like mac um krk's five inch they're the newer generation I have a universal audio interface, my little keyboard, and just, you know, that's what I got going on right now for my home studio. Um, it took, I've had a lot of different interfaces. I started out with the Scarlet, you know, the infamous Red. Well, actually, even before that, I had the M Audio and other ones. I've had um, the Tri Capture by Roland. Um, it took me a while to uh, get the universal audio one because it is a little more expensive but there is something about universal audio quality and you can just hear it it's a lot clearer um, I got that actually from AmericanMusical.com I did a down payment and got it over time I think in 2020 or so so that's an option but let's get to mixing Okay, so the first thing I do, um, let me, actually, let me delete, because I, I already started to mix this song, but I'm going to just, I'm, for the sake of you guys, I'm going to, like, delete everything and just redo it, because I can do them pretty quick now, and I already know what I do. Delete that, delete that. Delete, delete, delete. Delete. Okay. <clears throat> So here's the beat. We're just going to put it to like the, the part that I'm doing the most. Um, I'm going to put it to the part that's doing the most, like where all the instrumentals are playing. Okay. So what I do first is I go to my kick and I'm using Ableton, so you can do this on any um, platform, really. I'm going to take my Neutron 3 and put it on my kick. So there's specific frequencies that make things punch more louder and stuff. Kicks are usually between, like, 50 hertz. Um, that's a popping kick so when i go to like this clean 808 kick i don't really like clean up and fatten right here it's at 337 hertz um when you dip that it's automatically makes the kick sound more full and louder um i tweak it a little bit by raising it at about 50 hertz doesn't have to be a lot and then i make it a little smaller this also, you don't have to have it all the way. So let's just make that just a tiny bit. Cool. All right, we'll move on to the 808s. 808, same thing. I go to bass. And like I said, you're just doing this for your beat store. You don't have to be extremely, it's not like you're mixing a song for somebody. You're just trying to make it sound good for your website and uh, the person potentially purchasing. Clean 808. I turn the sub down quite a bit. That's the other thing too. Um, the exciter is how you get that like higher 
like when the hats are like I don't even know how to explain it but the snares when they smack more and stuff that's just an exciter that's all they're doing to it uh, so for instance the snare drop one on the snare I'll go to my snares the best one that I like on here is called dubby snare and you can move this to anywhere to where you want it where it sounds like it hits the best like if I put it down here I see that like over here it's really a smacker right there and then I'll take that I'll copy and paste that right to my uh, side snare but I may move that over So let's do, let's check out that little exciter they got. That's already good on there. Hats, very simple. You don't, you don't want to put an exciter too much on the hats because it will make it sound actually bad. And I've, I'm guilty of doing that in a lot of my beats. Um, but for that, I just go to percussion hi-hat processing that just that does the job right there um move this down so that my that's making sure that you're uh this is where the sound starts and it kind of fades out for the kick, like right there. So that's all I did for the hat. I'm going to copy that hat. Put it on the open hat too. So as you can see too, um, as you can see, I have most of my levels are at like negative six. This one's a negative three. I, I give myself headspace so that when I master the beat, I can turn up that exciter and make it louder um, without making it too loud, if that makes sense. So I, I don't really ever keep my drums at zero. Um, it just, I, I mix it first to see how it sounds to me once that sounds good then i master it and we go from there so let's see how this sounds cool levels sound good now i'm gonna take a uh, sidechain compressor and i'm going to put them on individual instruments to make the other ones push through that instrument and I'll explain what that means in a second. So if I go to my 808, I'll take my compressor and drop it right on the 808. I open it up, I click side chain, and then I put my kick because I want the kick to push through the 808. This is how your beat won't sound muddy, how certain frequencies and instruments will hit harder and it'll hit through the other instruments. It's like a sandwich kind of, like like how I laid the beat out. You want the, the things to be more prominent to be on top. <clears throat> and you can actually punch them through the other sounds to, uh, you know, make it sound better, more clear. So my compressor right here is on the 808. And I usually do the kick and like the snare, whatever I want to come through, that's all. So those gray bars is the 808. That's the 808 sound. When I drag this down, the kick will come through and you'll see what I mean.
See when I put it all the way down, you barely hear the 808, but just a little bit. You just want it to be just a little bit so that it comes through. So now that I have the kick, the snare, and the side snare coming through the 808, I just literally take that, all those, that chain, I copy it, I'm going to put it on the hi-hats, boom, I'm also going to put it on the melody, boom. Now that I'm on the melody, I also want the 808 to come through too, so I'll drop another compressor. Right after the kick, we're going to side chain the 808. Same thing with the hi hats. I would like the open hat to come through that, so. Okay, so now that I have that stuff pretty much down the way I want it, um, I'm going to put ozone on the master and this is just to make it a little louder and uh, to make sure everything sounds right. I'm going to put my headphones on for this because um, I like to do a little fine tuning with the headphones and not just the monitors. Also, um, I to make levels, to make them the way that I want them to be, I turn it very loud. So I'll warn you before I do that, but... I, I put the volume all the way up to make sure I'm not breaking anything. My ears are used to it, so I've been doing this for a while. Uh, may have a different approach, but that's how I do it, so. So I have um, Ozone 9 and 8. I prefer 8 because I think it uses less CPU. Um, and um, there's just some features I liked about it a little more. And I'll show you that in a second. And the first thing I find out is the dynamics of the song. Ozone has a built-in, um, it listens to it. So you, you go to like the main part of the song, either the loudest part or where all the instruments are playing, and you just press learn, it will break it down for you. Now that we have that, I can go to each individual part of the song and listen to it to see if it's loud enough and I compress that a little bit too. So let's do like, let's hear the lows first. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna click the solo on the low. The highs. Mid. And this is just like a quick tutorial like I'm showing you. So what you want to do is you want to turn the threshold down um, to compress that sound to make it punch through more. 
like I was saying before. Um, I'm just going to run through the very low, the mids, and then the highs. I just compress it a very little bit, makes it punch through a little more, and then you fine tune it. See how it's only coming through just a little bit. You want it to like just tap through. That's it. Not too drastic, but just come through a little bit. And like I said, I'm going to go through just the line. Okay, now I'm going to uh, go to the maximizer. Um, we do the ceiling and the threshold. I usually keep it on balanced or modern, depending which sounds better, but balanced is usually the best I've come to find. Now, this is where I turn it very loud, uh, just to hear that I'm not breaking anything. So turn your speakers down a little bit if you're listening to this pretty loud because it's gonna get loud, so. Now that that's very loud, and I probably blew your speakers, I can hear where it's too much. You know what I mean? Coming through too much. So I can adjust accordingly. I can go back, um, mess around with the lows, mess around with other things to make sure that that breaking doesn't come through. So let's play around with it a little bit.
also I forgot to tell you, like for the melody, you want to have an EQ on there that cuts off the low end um, because you want your bass to come through, obviously. And I'm sure you've seen on other channels about EQing the frequencies um, towards the left is the low or the bass and towards the right is the hi-hats and higher frequency things. So um, when you're mixing with Neutron and stuff, it already pretty much does that for you with the hi-hats and stuff. Um, the snares, like you saw before, put it in that frequency range. Um, the kick, same thing. Uh, the 808 stretches to about, it, it can stretch to like 300 and something hertz, sometimes more, depending on what genre of music you're doing. But um, the main thing is getting those kicks, those snares, things like that punching through. Um, and uh, that's probably the most important part. So let's continue. I like that. And then I like to listen to it on my monitors again, just to hear. Um, things you can do to check your work is um, you can export the track and play it um, alongside another song that's already out, like download a song from YouTube of a rapper that you're making the song in a type beat of. For instance, if you're if you're making a song like a Kodak Black type beat, download a Kodak Black song and play your beat jump back and forth look at the level of the full wave or mp3 when you're done compare them see do my snares hit the same as the ones in there does my bass come through the same if not you can go back in and this is like there's no right or wrong way technically to mix and master beats um, there's good advice out there, but it's really up to your ear and training yourself to hear, does that smack where I want it to or doesn't it? And you can uh, fine tune that. It takes a while. Um, I had no idea how to do this in the beginning when I, when I first started. And then like I worked at Guitar Center for a while and the people would tell me, compression, compression. I'm like, what the fuck? What is this compression? And then I, I read up on it. I learned about what compressing is and like what side chaining is and why um, stuff smacks more, comes through. So it's really finding out the frequencies of your instruments that you're using, where you want them to punch and how you want them to come through. Mastering, like I just showed you, it's pretty simple. Um, we did this in under 30 minutes. Uh, I'm sure it's under 30. I mean, I've been recording on my phone for about 30 minutes, but it doesn't really take that long. And when you're done, you get better and better over you know, time. I wasn't great at it in the beginning, and some of my stuff is still not the best, but it's good enough that people listen to my stuff, and I've worked with companies. I've sold beats in the past couple years i've had you know over 300 400 maybe independent artists come and buy beats from me and they come back and keep working with me so obviously i'm doing something right other tips the reason you want to make your songs sound good for youtube and stuff is i can't tell you the amount of times that i've been in a recording studio like in miami and i've had to <clears throat> assist a session with people from 300 entertainment uh people that were on um who else uh, let me think universal music group atlantic records you know they come in and if they're just vibing the first thing that these signed artists do i'm not bullshitting you is they say put up youtube type in so and so type beat i'm not going to say any of the artists actual names uh due to things you know but these people are signed by a label and they'll be like pull up a kodak type in kodak black type beat and i've 
you you never know who's listening is my point you, you you really don't you don't know who's checking it out who's vibing to it and they'll either skip it or they'll download it and um we, we do it right there in the studio like we'll we'll take the youtube beat we'll download it with the tag and everything and he'll just start freestyling on it like he'll go in the booth and you know do his thing if it's good and he really is like yeah this could be something um, you know they reach out to the producer and they buy it and they get the track outs or whatever and they they go from there but what i'm saying is like make your shit kind of stand out uh take the time to learn how to mix and master because you never know who is listening you never know who's vibing to it who's going to freestyle to it and like i said from experience i've i've been with artists from 300 entertainment um from Atlantic Records, and they come in, and we pull up these tight beats on YouTube, and that's what they say. We're, and then just sitting there smoking a blunt, whatever, you're sitting in the studio, and they're just listening. No, I kind of like that, but like, next one. And I've I've seen producers, you know, that um, they'll like one of their beats, and then they'll go to their YouTube channel, and they'll check out, does he have any more of this tight beat, or whatever, because if you have that shit down, they're going to fuck with you and they're going to keep listening and they're probably going to work with you. And that's how a lot of these producers that are on YouTube, they do get major placements and stuff is just because it just so happens. So and so is in the studio, they hear it, it's it's mixed properly, and then they vibe. Um, because like I said, a major artist or even like somebody who's halfway professional they're not just going to take your mp3 of a mixed and mastered song and um if they're if they're going to cut an album or, or a single they're 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 usually going to have to buy the track outs and that's what your goal is but this is an overall just i want it to sound good so it catches people's attention um are there people that are going to buy it and record over it, put it out on soundcloud of course i've had hundreds of people do that um is it very professional? Not really. No, you 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 do want to buy the track outs. Um, you your your goal is to sell the song exclusively, giving them the track out files. So, for instance, for this, I would export it, um, all the individual tracks, um, for like that I mixed, so they can have a reference. But I also do it. I take all of the ozone and neutron and everything off and just put it at zero and have it as is, you know, raw, so that they can take it to somebody and mix it the way that they would. Um, because obviously at home, I don't have things like uh, um, hardware, you know, all those things. Um, I just have my little interface here. But in a studio environment, there's a lot more equipment, there's a lot more things they can play with. So that's what you're going for. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'll be doing a video on sync licensing and stuff soon. I wish you the best of luck. And if you have any questions or comments, anything, just drop them below. Uh, you can hit me up on Twitter. I'm on there mostly at Logues Beats or um, Instagram, you know, but I primarily am on Twitter the most. Take care. Love music. Love your life and enjoy yourself. Peace.